Hi everyone, in my last video I derived the result that the coefficient of restitution in the case of a one-dimensional elastic collision between two particles is exactly equal to one. What I'd like to do in this video is generalize that result and see how we can interpret the coefficient of restitution um, in the case of an inelastic collision. Now the difference with an inelastic collision is that we can't write down an equation um, that tells us that kinetic energy is conserved because it isn't because it's inelastic, right? So what we're aiming to do is derive a relationship between the coefficient of restitution and the, the energies of the particles. Okay, so that's broadly speaking what we're trying to do. Now I've got a diagram of the situation that we're analyzing at the top left here, um, which may be self-explanatory. Um, we've got two particles, masses m1 and u2, initial velocities u1 and u2, final velocities v1 and v2. I say a bit more about that in my previous video. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start by writing down the uh, definition of the coefficient of restitution, which I'm going to call e. And the definition, remember, was v2 minus v1, which is the speed of restitution, or the relative speed after the collision, divided by u1 minus u2, which is the speed of approach or the relative speed before the collision. Now, remembering that what we're trying to do is see how this thing is related to kinetic energies, and remembering that kinetic energy involves squared speeds, the first thing I'm going to do is just square this expression and see what happens so that we start to get some uh, squared speed terms appearing, right? So all I'm going to say is that, well, if this is the case, then E squared, coefficient of restitution squared, is going to be V2 minus V1 squared over U1 minus U2 squared. Okay, now let's see how we can simplify the top and the bottom of this fraction. So if we just focus on the numerator to start with, uh, which is v2 minus v1 all squared. Well, I'm going to partially expand the brackets here. <laughs> I'm going to say that this is equal to uh, v2 into v2 minus v1 minus v1 into v2 minus v1. Okay, so I've kind of expanded one of the brackets, but not the other one. Uh, and we've ended up with this. Now, um, what we can then do, again, I'm aiming to make this kind of look as close to the expression um, for kinetic energy as possible, which has these speed squared terms in it. So what I'm going to do is factor out a v2 from this first bracket, right? So we're going to get v2 squared, because I've taken out another factor of v2, then in the bracket we'd be left with a 1 there, and we'd be left with uh, minus v1 over v2, because we've taken out that v2, right? If we do a very similar thing on the second bracket, um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to change the sign to plus, and I'm going to take out a factor of v1, right? So the second term is going to become v1 squared. Because I've made, uh, I've changed this sign from minus to plus, we're also going to have to flip uh, or switch around the terms in the brackets. And so um, this minus v1 is just going to become a 1, and this v2 is going to become a minus v2 over v1. Okay, so just a bit of algebraic manipulation there to try and get these um, squared speed terms appearing. Now we could do a very similar thing, and so I'm just going to write down similarly um, for the, the denominator of this fraction. So that we'd get almost exactly the same thing if we did u1 minus u2 squared. Um, you would just have u's wherever we have v's in this expression. And it doesn't matter that it's u1 minus u2 rather than u2 minus u1, because when we square it, the order doesn't matter. Okay, so if we use these results and plug them back into the definition of the coefficient of restitution uh, squared, we're going to get the following result. e squared is going to be, um, okay, I'm going to reorder the terms from up here. We're going to have uh, v1 squared brackets 1 minus v2 over v1, and then we're going to have our v2 squared term, so v2 squared 1 minus v1 over v2. Now let me just draw a nice straight line for this big fraction here. Um, we're going to get pretty much the same thing on the bottom with u's instead, right? So this is going to be over u1 squared 1 minus u2 over u1 plus u2 squared um, 1 minus u1 over u2. Now, um, at this point, you might be wondering how this simplifies. And so, in general, 
there's not a lot we can do with this, but if we choose our frame uh, in a particular kind of special way, this is going to simplify very nicely. Um, so what I want to do is assume that these velocities, u1, u2, v1, v2, are actually measured in the zero momentum frame, right? In other words, the frame um, in which the total momentum is zero, or in other words, the frame which is co-moving with the center of mass of the two particles. Now, the reason for doing that is that in the zero momentum frame, there are nice relations for the velocity ratios in terms of the mass ratios. To see why that is, I'm just going to point out at the bottom left here, the, at the bottom left of the screen here, that if we are in the zero momentum frame, right, then by definition, the following relations hold m1 u1, the momentum of the first particle, plus m2 u2, the momentum of the second particle initially is equal to zero. And similarly, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is zero. Okay, this is only true if we're in the zero momentum frame. And so if you rearrange, for example, the second of these equations, um, you'll arrive at the following result. So if we just put one term on each side um, and do some division, you'll find that minus v2 over v1 is equal to m1 over m2. Just follows from direct manipulation of that second um, equation there, right? And so recalling that in our big fraction over here, the uh, velocity ratio appeared in the form 1 minus v2 over v1. What we can do is say that 1 minus v2 over v1 is going to be the same as 1 plus m1 over m2, right? So when we go from a velocity ratio to a mass ratio, the 1s and 2s flip around and the sign also changes. And if we write that as a single fraction, it's going to be the same as m1 plus m2 over m2, because of the fact that 1 is the same as m2 over m2, right? So just putting those terms over a common denominator. Now we could do the same thing um, for um, v1 over v2, and also u2 over u1 and u1 over u2. So I'm just going to put etc there because you'll get a bunch of very similar results to this just by manipulating these two um, momentum equations. Now if we then use those velocity ratio identities in terms of the mass ratios, some interesting simplifications are going to happen um, in our coefficient of restitution equation because the first term on the top is going to be v1 squared. Remember this 1 minus v2 over v1 is exactly what we just worked out down there, m1 plus m2 over m2. So I'm going to put here m1 plus m2 over m2. Now, um, you'll find that the second term, the only difference here is that you've got v1 over v2 instead of v2 over v1. And all that ends up changing is that you get an m1 on the denominator instead of an m2. And we end up getting as our coefficient of v2 squared in that numerator, uh, we get m1 plus m2 over m1. Okay. Um, now, we're going to get, again, almost identical results on the bottom because the only difference um, is that we've got u's instead of v's. Um, but because we have equivalent uh, relations for the u's and the v's in terms of the, the momentum in the zero momentum frame, we're going to get the same coefficients in terms of the masses, right? So our u1 squared term is going to have a coefficient of the same as the v1 squared term. So m1 plus m2 over m2. And our v2 squared, sorry, u2 squared term is going to have the same coefficient as the v2 squared term. So here I can put m1 plus m2 over m2, like that. Now, um, notice that all of these terms now have a common factor of m1 plus m2. So we can just cancel those down. And if we multiply everything, the top and the bottom, by m1 and m2, then um, what are we going to end up with? Well e squared is going to be, the first term, we're going to end up with m1 v1 squared, right? Because there was an m2 on the denominator. We've multiplied by m2, which gets rid of that. And we've also multiplied by m1. So that m1 appears there. If we multiply the second term by m1 m2, we're going to get, for similar reasons, m2 v2 squared. Okay. Now, what about the bottom? Again, it's going to be pretty symmetrical. You're just going to get u's instead of v's, right? So m1 um, u1 squared plus m2 u2 squared. Now, um, 
hopefully this is starting to look familiar, all we have to do to make this look like kinetic energies is put a factor of a half in front of everything, which we're allowed to do um, as long as we put it in front of all the terms, right? So we put a half there. And this is the same as, well, the top is just the final kinetic energy, right? The kinetic energy after the collision. So I'm going to write that as um, E subscript K F for final. And the bottom is just the initial kinetic energy. So I'm going to write that as E subscript K um, I for initial. And there we go. We've derived this pretty interesting result that the coefficient of restitution is equal to the square root of the final kinetic energy um, as a, a fraction of the initial kinetic energy, like that. So this is one way we can interpret the coefficient of restitution in a general way. Um, it's basically a measure that goes from zero up to one of what, how much kinetic energy or what fraction of the initial kinetic energy is remaining after the collision has occurred. Final thing I want to uh, emphasize here is that this relation only holds in the zero momentum frame. Okay, so it's, it's a measure of the energy loss in the zero momentum frame specifically.